This coded message is being broadcast from a mysterious radio station inside Russia, and I'm picking it up 2,000 miles away using a tape measure. There's over a dozen of these strange stations that jump around the shortwave spectrum, occasionally broadcasting short streams of numbers in Morse or synthetic human voices. These number stations are operated by several countries, but most of the ones still operating are relics from the Cold War. Of course, no government has officially confirmed the purpose of these stations, but it's widely accepted that they're for transmitting messages to spies overseas without having to make direct contact with them. The radio signals are sent out for the whole world to hear, assuming you know the right time and frequency to expect it on, but it's encrypted in a way that only the intended recipient will be able to make sense of it probably using some kind of one-time pad encryption. It's essentially lines of random numbers and you only use each set of numbers once before moving on to the next one. And as long as the recipient is the only one who has a copy of the one-time pad, it's pretty much impossible to crack, at least as far as I'm aware, and I guess the people running the stations too. So obviously we're not gonna be able to decode any of the messages, but it's been a hobby of radio enthusiasts for decades to find these number stations, listen to the messages and document the frequencies that they operate on. To pick up radio signals, all you need is a radio and a suitable sized antenna for the frequency you're trying to tune into. I'm going to use this cool little software defined radio or SDR. All you have to do is plug it into a computer or a phone. And connect the antenna on this end. When we connect this dipole antenna, we can pick up commercial radio stations at around 100 megahertz. Cash back on your everyday debit card spending. Yeah. That's because at a frequency of 100 megahertz, the wavelength is about three meters long. You want an antenna to be about half a wavelength for good reception. So you can see I've got this dipole set at about one and a half meters. But number stations transmit in the shortwave region around 10 megahertz. So 10 times smaller frequency means 10 times larger wavelength. So we're looking at about a 30 meter wavelength. So our shortwave antenna is gonna to have to be at least 15 meters long or 50 feet. An antenna is just a piece of conductive material like copper wire stretched out in a straight line. I don't have a spare 50 foot of copper wire lying around, but I do have these two crappy old tape measures. The tape's metal and there's 20 meters between them so that's about 65 foot. I removed the tapes from their cases and sanded the ends to make an electrical connection between them. And connected a radio adapter. The higher you can get an antenna, the better. And being this close to a building is not ideal, but it's the best option I have. So I threw it out my bedroom window. I went outside and tensioned the other end on a metal post to try and get it as straight as I could. Now with our tape measure antenna in place, we just have to look up the time and frequency of the next number station broadcast. Attention, one, six, five, two, five. This is station E11 and it's broadcasting from Poland. Seven, seven, four, eight. Now let's try a station that transmits in Morse, station M12 which is transmitting from Russia. For this one, I've set up my iPad to decode Morse in real time. Any second now. And there it is. Sometimes stations transmit blank messages, like all zeros. And if they do that, they'll just send it out once or maybe twice but if they're sending out actual traffic, they'll normally repeat it every 20 minutes for an hour and then do that for a few days. I guess to allow the recipient multiple opportunities to catch the message. So there we go. We managed to pick up number stations on a tape measure with a phone. Thanks for watching. Bye.